Bringing us the breaking news uh, coming out of Germany. Uh, this is from Christian Falk, editor of German newspaper Built. He's just tweeted that Jaden Santo to Manchester United's it's a done deal. Agreement between Bruce Dortmund and Manchester United is done. Signature of contracts in the coming days. Uh, still, big, big news this one, um, Danny, for Manchester United. Look, they wanted him last season. The, the fee was led to be around 115 million, too much for United. They kind of passed on it. It's not going to be that this season. They've waited. They've got their man. Yeah, they have. Um, you start to wonder, you know, not where he's going to fit in. We know where he's going to play, but who's mm. going to miss out? Uh, you know, yeah. We just talked about it. You know, what does that mean for Marcus Rashford? What does that yeah. mean for, for Mason Greenwood? You know, we, we're Martial's all... the one that scares mm. me. I know it's a different place, but in terms of that forward line, you almost feel like something's got to give. Well, we know how good... Mason Greenwood is, yeah, um, and, and the way that he's coming through, and you suddenly think, well, hang on, could this mean that Marcus Rashford maybe doesn't play as often, or is Marcus Rashford going to the middle mm. and, and play as the nine? But then you've got Cavani, who was exceptional, who's just know, signed a contract extension yeah, last season. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, a good problem for, for Oligan and Solskjaer to have, um, but but not an easy one. You just is there going to be someone that leaves? You know, is it going to be one of those forward players? Could it be a Paul Pogba? Um, that that has to make way and, and, and maybe recoup some of the money as well. Maybe so. Look, good season last season for uh, Jaden Sancho. And that was punctured by injury as well, but it didn't stop him from getting 20 assists, 16 goals the season before that, 20 goals. So you know what he brings uh, to the table. Let's get more on this with our transfer guru, Alex Crook, who's kind enough to join us now. Alex, uh, what can you tell us? Do we know a fee as well? Yeah, good evening. Yeah, we do know a fee. Uh, 90 million euros is the upfront uh, fee. That's around about 80 million pounds sterling. 30 million pounds less than Borussia Dortmund were asking for from Manchester United last summer. So I guess Ed Woodward, who's taken a bit of kicking uh, down the years from Manchester United fans, maybe will say that patience has paid off in that respect. There will be various add ons as well. My understanding is they are team. Uh, related add-ons as opposed to individual add-ons. So if Manchester United win trophies if they qualify for the Champions League, there will be more payments due to Borussia Dortmund. But this has been a a deal that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been driving for for the past 18 months. He was really disappointed when United missed out on Sancho last summer. But as you say, it's going to be fascinating to see where he fits into the team. I've said it before. Mm. I'll say it again. For me, if you're going to spend £80 million on a player, I think United need a Declan Rice type character more than they need a Jaden Sancho at this stage. But there's no doubt, as you say, his numbers in Germany, his goals, his assists. He's clearly a very talented player. We haven't really seen that at these European Championships. Gareth Southgate, for reasons known only to himself, has been reluctant to use him. But I think he's a very exciting player. But he does come into an area of the, of the squad where Manchester United are already reasonably congested. That's interesting, isn't it, Danny? I mean, you look up front, and look, we just mentioned the players there that they've got. Mason Greenwood coming through, and I think he's going to be a fantastic talent. Would have been in this England squad for the Euros. Cavani, I think, has really set a world. Rashford, Martial, they've got goals. They've got goals already there. It is that midfield issue with Fred and McTominay that you thought that they would rather spend. Well, maybe they've got more money to spend. Maybe we're looking too far ahead, but you'd think if they are going to spend 80 million, it is. Well, they need to send half there as well. Yeah. They, they, they've, they've got to add to that. They've, they've got to make sure. They get somebody alongside Harry Maguire. Um, I don't think that was good enough. I think that will be Varane, Danny. I think Raphael Varane is very much their main target for that position. So, you know, and, and all of a sudden, anything, well, actually, you know, that's, that's a good, strong that's squad. A very you know, strong that's squad. competition for places, you know. <laughs> and I, I know maybe, as Alex just said, maybe Ed Woodward gets away with it a little bit that he saved 30 million. But had they got him in last season, where could they have finished? Would they have still, would they got to the latter stage of the Champions League? Would they have won? the Europa League would they have won some silverware so again it's that you know a little bit sort of catch 22 chicken and egg isn't it Mm. Um, it it looks like you know they're going to get that player Um, he's clearly a very very talented player Um, you know he he can't he can't get in the England side at the moment I know a lot of people keep wanting him to play but there's some good players that are keeping him out Um, and obviously Gareth's not seeing in training what he needs to see um, at the moment because if he was you know he would have been given an opportunity he would have been given a chance and, and if he's taken that if he takes that chance like we've seen with Bukayo Saka if you take your chance Gareth will, will stick with you Alex I, I've spoken about just before you come on there what does this mean for the development of Mason Greenwood to be fair Jaden Sancho can play on the left as well but we, we normally see him on the right like, what does it mean for him someone so young as well Jaden Sancho is coming in and he's not 29 30 where you feel okay Mason Greenwood's development won't be hindered too long because the player's only got three or four years Jaden Sancho's 21 He's there for the future. What do you think it means for not just him, but maybe a Martial up front? 
Yeah, and it's a signing that smacks of longevity. It's a five-year contract, so clearly Manchester United see this as a long-term project. For me, Anthony Martial has had enough opportunities now. He's been in the Premier League long enough um, and hasn't done it for Manchester United. So I think he could well be the biggest victim of this transfer. I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has always seen Mason Greenwood as a player very much in, in his own mould, really. Someone who can play as a, a number nine, can learn you, you off mean, You mean a sub? Cavani. That's what he's trying to say. Uh, well, no, someone, <laughs> someone who can learn off Edison Cavani and, and, and become a top-class a top class centre-forward. I think that is the future for Mason Greenwood. Marcus Rashford is an interesting one because mm. I adore Marcus Rashford. I think he's got all the talent in the world. I think what he's done off the pitch in the last 18 months or so has been absolutely phenomenal. My son is, is a big Manchester United fan. What a role model Marcus Rashford has been. Mm. But I think on the pitch, is it controversial, Danny, to say that maybe he's lost his way a bit, not just for Manchester United, but for England as well? No, not at all. Um, I think, you know, you have to look at performances you know people say oh yeah he still scored goals and yeah but performances haven't been fantastic they've dipped they, this they season. have dipped yeah. you know, for, for whatever reason it happens you know play you know and especially young players they have ups and downs and there's been a lot going on off the pitch as well which is you know absolutely outstanding and you know full credit to that but sometimes it does take a little bit of energy away from it it does take a little bit of focus you know from from what you're trying to do on the pitch so you know maybe it's you know that extra competition for places will just ramp up everybody's game Alex you mentioned uh, Varane there obviously look I think had an up and down Euros if I'm honest with you sometimes he looked like a Virgil van Dijk and sometimes he looked like Virgil van Dijk honestly he looked, he looked very average if they do get him though and they do obviously complete this Sancho deal which I'm sure they're going to do how far do you think they are away from City potentially maybe even Liverpool and Chelsea I think will will come in strong next season as well I think it's a big challenge for Manchester United because, yes, they finished second in the Premier League, but I think it was a bit of a false second place in some ways. Manchester City started the season so slowly, still won it at the canter. Liverpool had all kinds of injury problems. Virgil van Dijk has been posting pictures on social media. He is working hard to be fit for the new season. Chelsea will go again mm. under Thomas Tuchel. Arsenal are showing ambition with bids for the likes of, of Ben White, £50 million. Pounds. So I think it's going to be really difficult uh, for Manchester United. This is a good signing. Jaden Sancho is a good addition to that squad. But as I say, I think they need a, a, another defensive midfielder. I agree with Danny. They need to get this deal for Varane over the line. They need another centre-back. And I think the right-back is interesting as well because I know they're really keen to bring Kieran Trippier back from Atletico Madrid. Not sure how close that deal is, but I think now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sees that Aaron Wan-Bissaka is a very good defender, but is he a modern fullback? Does he offer enough going forward mm. for a team that want to challenge for the Premier League and want to go deep in the Champions League as well? Alex Crook, our transfer guru, thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm going to put that question too that I put to Alex as well. Like if they do get Varane, and look, we know the Sancho deal now looks like it's going to be done in the next what couple of days or so. How far away do you think they are from City? But you said at the top there, that's a good squad now. I mean, Maguire and Varane, Jaden Sancho potentially up front with Cavani and, and Rashford, the midfield of Pogba and Fernandez. Luke Shaw looks really good so far that, in the Euros. That's the key. You've just said the midfield trio, mm. duo trio, whichever way they're going to play, that's the key. They've got to get that right. You know, Fernandez has been, you know, sensational, uh, but he needs support in that area. Has Pogba done that often enough for Manchester United? Not yet. And then you need, who's going to be the out-and-out -out holder? Is McTominay going to step up, you know, and become that player? Yeah. Quite possibly. That's the key. And we talk about it all the time. You've got to have a very, very strong spine. Full-backs, wingers, periphery. Unless it's a Mo Salah-type winger where he's scoring, you know, 30 goals yeah. a season. Mm. But, you know, you've got to have, you don't win anything. You don't get close to winning things without a very, very strong spine of the team.